Hi, welcome back. I guess there's no avoiding the question, and the answer is no, I didn't start drawing last week. I did a quick sketch, but start drawing, um, lay the foundations for drawing habits, I'm afraid not. And the question is why? Uh, you know, I wanted to, it's in my best interest, and I enjoy drawing. But I don't. I'm sure we've all got something that we know, deep down, we enjoy doing, but we're not doing regularly enough, if at all. And uh, it's an important question that we need to answer. I don't believe there's some kind of clever... Um, YouTube hack, uh, a guru can give you the answer and that will solve the problem. The answer lies in a book. I think a lot of very interesting stuff has been written about habit formation. Uh, I can recommend a few books, Charles de Higgs, um, I think it's called The Power of Habit, uh, James Clear, Atomic Habit, very good, very, very good overviews of, of how habits work, uh, the phases, trigger, action, reward. You know, the, the, there's a lot of theory about this, and I think it's pretty solid, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to actually start. I guess one could paraphrase Tim Ferriss, uh, the, the podcaster and angel investor, an all-round interesting chap, and he said about writing that, you know, you start writing when the pain of not writing exceeds the pain of writing. You know, when you just, you, you can't avoid it, you have to do it. It's a compulsion, and not doing that thing simply makes you feel unimaginably bad. Well, that's an interesting idea. And some of the uh, more novel hacks, shall we say, that have been suggested kind of work around that. Uh, one of them is, and I think there's apps available, where you essentially make bets, you know, uh, you're going to pay $1,000 to your most loathed charity if you don't meet a particular target. And... The, the sheer dread of having to hand over your ill-gotten gains to the people that you most despise will keep you on the straight and narrow. It might work. Um, I haven't tried that. I know in terms of my, my sculptural practice, I, I did a talk once in this series on, might have seen, on my little black book. A sort of record keeping, a daily ritual, and something where charting my progress, measuring how much I'm doing, and not trying to be perfect, but just trying to be better than the day before, has seemed to work for me with my sculpture. It hasn't really worked with my drawing, and surprise, surprise, I haven't really tried it properly yet. Perhaps that could be what I do between this week and last week. I think also when I look at some of the suggestions and James Clear is very strong on this, a lot of the ideas revolve around managing your environment. So something that I can try for next week is to set up my material for drawing and a dedicated spot for drawing the night before, so that when I get up, all I have to do is, is simply go to that chair and start drawing. And it's, it's a bit like people who, who suggest that if you want to start exercising, the thing to do is have your gym gear out ready for running gear, out ready for uh, exercise, so that the moment you walk through the door, coming home from work, it's there. The second thing that 
a lot of people suggest in the context of the the perennial exercise avoider is set your target as putting the gear on rather than actually doing the exercise now that seems counterintuitive surely the idea is is to do the exercise and not just put on a pair of shorts and and trainers but the thinking's a bit like this and and the american uh, choreographer dancer twyla tharp she's spoken about this how her objective is to put her gym gear on something that she doesn't particularly like doing um and hail a cab in the morning and she doesn't have to do the workout if she gets to the gym um and she just has a smoothie and chats to her friend that's fine her objective in the morning was to put her gym clothes on and get in a cab and blurt out uh the dance attic gym or whatever it's called i went to dance attic gym that's actually an interesting story my strongest gym phase was in, in west london southwest london and i went to a gym called the dance attic run by two amazingly strong and very camp brothers the the fairbrass brothers you might remember that song i'm too sexy for my shirt it was them um i used to do bench press with with uh, the slightly smaller more musical incantation of the sexy shirt duo great place to train some amazing mix of people international athletes everyday folk housewives and there was a, a dance studio that sort of adjoined the gym uh, anyway that's a an as, aside apropos of nothing it was easy to go there though you know I, I kept that gym habit going because i'd get home and i there were just interesting people in the gym uh, that i liked meeting so i just went to the gym and there was no shortage of someone that i knew that irrespective of whether i trained hard or not i'd meet someone and i'd think wow that was a that was time well spent and in, so in the end it was a sort of a, a conversational habit with a little bit of um, bench press thrown in on the side and then the, the exercising kind of took off there's a, a bloke who played for richmond rugby club and he was short for training partner one night and said you know um will you spot for me and uh he was doing bench press as it happens and we got chatting and it, it really made a big difference because in the end it was about it, it, it was about uh, a very simple thing just showing up and then uh, the habit took care of itself and at the moment my problem for example with drawing is i'm just not showing up so perhaps rather than the uh extreme thousand dollar bet app perhaps the thing to do is is find a friend and set up an an interesting routine uh where you do things together and i i think this is one of the things that's really um been a big development in uh, uh the pursuit of learning new skills on the internet is is the growth of communities where there are supportive people who irrespective of whether they live in you know Timbuktu or Tallahassee or Twickenham you're in touch you're sharing a common interest and uh i think that's a, a an amazing resource that makes development so much more natural uh, and it's something that i i definitely feel the lack of here uh there isn't someone that i can talk about drawing with at the end of a long day um someone that i'm i suppose that i don't want to let down or or that I'm being positive that I'm looking forward to sharing something with and and that I'm looking forward to seeing what they've done so what am I going to do for next week i think the way forward first of all is to start working on these kind of environmental factors setting up a drawing space where it's just drawing that I'm going to do uh i have a 500 square meter home i must surely be able to find a surface to do my drawing on 
uh, where I'm quiet and undisturbed, you know, other than the occasional dog bark or my noisy neighbours. So, so that's step one, and I think step two is to start the book. Uh, you know, if we find one good strategy that works for us, we double down on that. Rather than trying to eliminate our weaknesses, build on our strength. If this idea of, of, a, of obsessive record keeping works for me, well, that's what I need to do. But will I? Tune in next week to find out. Uh, if you can wait that long, you probably can. In the interim, it would be great to hear from you. Uh, pop down a comment. Let me know if you've got some interesting strategies to embed uh, new habits. Anyway, until next week, from sunny Brazil, ciao.